Confidence is a strange thing. It's something we all talk about having or not having. People frequently say things like, I'm just not confident. I wouldn't have the confidence to do that. I just don't have confidence in this field. And very often, it's something that we feel other people have in abundance, but we don't. And what's even stranger is that if a person that we perceive as being confident is asked about it, they'll usually respond by saying that they aren't. Let's start by talking about what confidence actually is. Well, the great news is that confidence itself doesn't actually exist. It's just a word and nothing more. Confidence is simply a name that we give to describe a set of skills that can be learned by anyone. And these skills enable a person to feel that they can succeed in any given situation or circumstance. How terrific is that? It's terrific news because it means that we can all learn to have more confidence whenever we need it. Confidence has nothing whatsoever to do with our genes, how rich we are, whether we're male or female, tall, short, thin, fat. It also has nothing to do with having the gift of the gab. We can often be confident in some areas of our lives, but lack confidence in others. For example, a person could be extremely confident in the workplace, but not good at all at making friends or with the opposite sex. Another person can be very confident with their family and very close friends, but will feel very, very uncomfortable in the workplace. We're all born as a relatively blank canvas. We have the basic skills of breathing, movement, and most of us are equipped with our five senses, sight, hearing, touch, smell, and taste. Everything else is there for the learning. Some people fail to develop good confidence skills because of their upbringing. So often, well-meaning parents, teachers, and guardians cause a lack of confidence in their children without even realizing it. And this then carries on into later life. I've worked with some highly successful people running large organizations, and these people make decisions every day that affect hundreds and sometimes thousands of people. However, the very thought of standing up and making a presentation to even a small amount of people scared the living daylights out of them. You can develop confidence with practice and a real desire to change. And here are some great ways to do it. Firstly, avoid thinking about yourself. It's important that we value ourselves and put our needs and wishes before those of other people. However, the problem with this is that we can end up becoming too wrapped up in ourselves at the very times when it's unhelpful. Most of the anxiety, especially the sort that we feel in a social situation, comes from self-consciousness. Awareness of yourself and your imagined failings. Imagine for a moment that you were in a crisis where you needed to act quickly and there was no time to think about yourself, perhaps to save someone's life. Think about it. You wouldn't feel nervous. You wouldn't have the time or the opportunity to think about yourself. It's only when you begin to think about your failings and your weaknesses that anxiety takes a hold. A great way to prevent or at least to reduce this self-awareness and in turn to increase your confidence is to focus your attention on some aspect of your surroundings. This might be another person, in which case I don't mean staring at them like a madman, or focus on an object or even some challenging mental puzzle. This takes the focus off yourself and onto the objects, the people or the places in your vicinity. Don't compare yourself with others. You may look at someone and think that they have something you don't, but the fact is that they may be looking at you and thinking the very same thing. Someone may be better than you are at sport, for example, but perhaps you have a sharper wit or can play a musical instrument. Judge yourself by your own standards. Remember, every single one of us is unique. Just close your eyes for a moment and just imagine how you behave if you felt really confident. What would you see? What would you hear? How would you hold yourself? The mind and the body are linked. If you have a bad thought, you feel bad. If you have a good feeling, you think positive thoughts. Adopting the posture and actions of a confident person creates the thoughts of confidence and tells your unconscious mind how you want to be. And this starts a chain reaction of increasing self-confidence. Make sure you practice. Like any new skill, practice makes perfect. Make building your confidence a habit. And when you're feeling insecure or begin to doubt your abilities, don't hide away. Take a deep breath. Get out there and do the very things that you feel insecure about. For example, if you want to approach a member of the opposite sex, but you're not really sure you can do it, why not practice by taking off your watch and spend an hour walking around the town, asking people who look okay for the time? 
This gets you used to approaching strangers and you'll build your confidence. When you've done this for about an hour, trust me, it won't be an issue. Make the most of your mistakes. Absolutely everyone, no matter how perfect they may seem, messes up from time to time. Mistakes are a lesson. That means we can avoid doing the same thing next time. And this is how we learn, like the process of learning to walk as children. If we don't stumble, then we don't learn how to keep our balance. Keep this in mind as you practice. Welcome mistakes. Learn from them. Try not to repeat them. And don't let them knock your confidence. Forget perfection. The more you strive to be perfect, the more frustrated you become when you realise it's impossible. If you have a tendency to be a perfectionist, keep it in check. No one is perfect, so don't expect perfection from yourself or others. And lastly, be kind to yourself. This is crucial for building self-confidence. If you learn to treat yourself properly instead of punishing yourself, your self-confidence will grow.